Good morning. In this lecture, we're going to uh, continue studying different PMFs, or probability mass functions. Um, in particular, the PMFs that we're going to look at today involve um, random processes which have um, two possible outcomes. So the first one that I want to look at is uh, something called the Bernoulli distribution. And uh, before we get there, let's talk about what a Bernoulli experiment is. So a Bernoulli experiment, um, this is just an experiment with two possible outcomes. So only two possible outcomes. So for example, hit or miss. Um, maybe you're a sharpshooter. Or heads, tails, another example. Or pass, fail. So there's only um, two of them. Um, another definition we need is as follows. Uh, when we uh, perform Bernoulli trials, uh, we are performing a series of independent experiments. So uh, we've talked about the idea of um, independence, and uh, that is going to play an important part in this section. Um, again, the idea about, uh, or the definition of two independent events is two events are going to be independent if the probability of A and B is the same thing as the probability of A times the probability of B. So that's going to um, pop up a little bit later today. So um, let's let a P be the probability of success, and Q be the probability of failure. So uh, you can define success and failure pretty arbitrarily. You know, maybe a success is hitting something, maybe a success you're calling it missing. Uh, but regardless of how you define it, we're going to use the letter of lowercase p for the probability of success. Q, the probability of failure. So Q is going to be just 1 minus P, since we have um, two possible um, outcomes, and these guys are uh, mutually exclusive. So um, let's let some of this stuff. Uh, so with this um, notation, with this idea of Bernoulli trials, we're ready to um, come up with um, a Bernoulli distribution. So let's let capital X be the number of successes uh, for a one for nearly trial. So you flip a coin just once, as an example. So let's come up with the uh, PMF for this. Well, there are two possible outcomes. We can either have a one success with probability of p, or no successes with the probability of one minus p um, or q. Um, this fully describes the Bernoulli distribution. And you could write it like that, but it's not as elegant um, as the way I'm going to write it in a second. Um, in addition, we're going to start talking about having n independent trials. And this is going to become really difficult if we start um, writing it up this way. So let's try to clean this up. Again, this is completely valid to describe the PMF, but let's write it in a better way. So we say that x is distributed, um, or has a Bernoulli distribution with parameter p, if f of x equals p times 1 minus p, um, where I left out the correct exponents. So I claim that there are exponents that you can put up there so that this fully describes this. So why don't you pause the video, think about that, see if you can uh, figure out what should go in those boxes. Right, hopefully you gave it a, an honest attempt. Um, so I think if I put an x here and a 1 minus x here, that'll do the trick. Right, because if I put a 0 in, then p to the 0 is 1. Um, 
1 minus 0 is 1. f of 0 is 1 minus p. Cool. If I put a 1 in, p to the 1 is p. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus p to the 0 is 1. So f of 1 is p. So that fully describes the Bernoulli distribution. Okay, let's come up with the um, expected value of this thing. So again, the, the expected value of a distribution is a measure of average on the sample space. Well, um, by definition, the expected value of x can be found by summing by summing over the sample space x times the PMF. So that's what I'm doing. Well, um, I guess this is going to be 0 times p to the 0 times 1 minus p to the 1 minus 0 plus 1. Um, so I'll put that 1 in there. So 1 times p to the first times 1 minus p to the 1 minus 1. Uh, this first guy is just 0. Uh, 1 minus p to the 0 is just 1. So I guess I'm left with p. So um, that's interesting. Let's look at it in terms of a, a coin example. Uh, let's say the probability, uh, let's see, it's an equal sided coin. The probability of, uh, let me count the number of heads, the probability of success is 0.5. The expected value of this distribution is 0.5. But it, that's interesting because um, we're never going to get 0.5, but this is what we're getting, quote unquote, on average. Right? You can either get zero heads or one heads, but this is still a measure of center. So one thing to note then about the expected value, um, and you may have realized this already, is that um, you don't necessarily have to actually get a value that is in the outcome space. Okay, let's find the uh, variance of x. And let's use our um, nicer formula. The expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. So the expected value of x squared means we do this computation. But with an x squared instead of an x. So that'll be this guy. Minus the expected value of x, we just computed that, squared. Well, by a similar game, this 0 here is just going to zap that out. So I just need to put the 1 in. So we get p to the first, 1 minus p to the 0, because 1 minus 1 is 0, minus p squared. And that gives us p minus p squared. And that's completely fine for the variance. Typically, though, the way that it's written is p times 1 minus p or p times q. So um, in our coin example that I just talked about, again, assuming that um, it's an uh, equal sided coin, we have that the expected value of x is 0.5, and the variance of x is 0.5 times 0.5, or 0.25. And again, this variance is a measure of spread. Um, let me say now that um, we don't really have a good intuitive sense of what the 0.5 actually represents. Um, we know it's a measure of spread, but you know, is this a big spread? Is this a small spread? The expected value we can kind of picture because it's um, you know, the value that's in the middle of the 0 and the 1. So let me say that variability the variance, um, it's going to have more meaning um, in a couple of sections. But let me just say again, uh, as a reminder, um, higher variances just mean that the sample space is more spread out. So that's the way that you want to um, think about it. All right, so this is for one trial. Now we're going to jump up to more than one trial. And actually, the, the more than one trial case is the one that we're really interested in. So uh, what if we perform 14 trials? So let's see the coin example again. And let's say the probability of success is 4 sevenths. And uh, we're counting the number of heads. The probability of failure is 3 sevenths. So it's a biased coin. 
So um, first, let's try to come up with the probability that x equals 6. So again, x is the number of heads, and I'm defining a success as um, getting heads. So pause the video. This is actually a combinations type question. Um, the idea of independence is going to uh, be lurking in the background. So uh, let me just say these 14 trials, um, I should have written 14 Bernoulli trials. Uh, the trials are independent. Let's see if you can come up with that probability. All right, hopefully you gave it a shot. So let's see. Um, I'm going to get six heads. But if I get six heads, that means I'm also getting um, eight tails. So leave a little bit of space here. You'll see why in a second. And um, hopefully, at the very least, you had four sevenths to the sixth times three sevenths to the eighth. In other words, um, what I'm writing down here is um, you know, heads, 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 and then tails of the rest of those guys. But this isn't quite correct. Because this is only one way, when I articulate it like this, this is only one way that I can get that sequence. I actually could have also gotten tails, heads, 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 and then the rest tails. In other words, maybe it was tails first. With that in mind, this uh, probability of occurring is exactly the same as this probability of occurring because multiplication is commutative. So we would just, you know, maybe we write a 3 7 times 4 7 to the 6 times 3 7 to the 7, still the same number. And in fact, um, all of these arrangements have the same exact probabilistic value. So to come up with the total probability, all I need to do is find out how many of these guys there are and multiply it by this one probability. Because I can add up all these probabilities since the events are mutually exclusive. So how many ways can I do this? So what am I doing? I'm lining up, I'm lining up six heads and eight tails. So hopefully this reminds you of the Democrat-Republican problem where we line them up, where we line people up. Well, from the 14 slots, I can choose six of them to be the heads. And then for the remaining eight slots, I can choose eight of them to be the tails. So that would be the answer. Um, if you're not sure where this is com coming from, please revisit the combinations, uh, re revisit that lecture where we talked about um, combinations and permutations. Let me also say that this eight choose eight, I'm never gonna write that because um, eight choose eight is one, and we saw that for that second group, um, we're always going to get one because the first six slots are spoken for. You only have one way to, to do the remaining ones. All right, so uh, that's the probability that um, x equals six. Um, pause the video, see if you can come up with the probability that x equals x. Right, hopefully you said, well, I'm going to... Uh, let me actually think about it the same way. So I've got my heads, um, x of them. I've got my tails. Well, let's see. Um, we're doing 14 total, x over here, so I guess that's 14 minus x. And the same game. I'm going to choose x slots for the uh, heads. And for the remaining 14 uh, minus x, I'm going to choose 14 minus x for the tails. Same game here. And uh, finally, the sample space for this is, is what? Well, um, I can have 0 heads up to 14 heads because I'm flipping it 14 times. All right, so that's a specific example of what we call the binomial distribution. So let's now come up with the general formula. So um, let's let um, P equal the probability of success. Let's perform a 
um, and Bernoulli trials. Again, these are independent trials. And let's let x be the number of successes. Um, then x is distributed as a binomial distribution with parameters n and p. So it's written like that, or you could fully articulate the word binomial. Um, this guy will have the PMF. Well, give it a shot. Pause the video, see if you can see what we did here, and generalize it to the general case of N and P. All right, uh, hopefully you paused the video and you said, oh, okay, uh, N choose X, right? Because the N trials, uh, my probability of success is P. I'm going to have X of those guys. 1 minus P, probability of failure, I'm going to have N minus X of those guys. And finally, the sample space is 0 up through n, because you can have 0 of the event occurring up through n of them. All right, let's come up with the um, expected value of this. And we'll derive that, and I'll just um, give you guys the variance. Uh, so we'll, we'll figure it out in a second. Um, before we do, though, I mean, let's once again use our intuition and let's see what we think the expected value is going to be. So if you flip a coin 10 times, on average, how many do you expect? Well, if it's a fair coin, hopefully you said 5. 10 times 0.5 is 5. Um, so 10 times 0.5, that's n times p. So again, I think ahead of time, I think it's going to be n times p. I don't know it's going to be n times p. Um, but let's derive it with that uh, intuition and um, uh, formulate our proof, assuming that that's what we're going we're to get. Again, we might not actually get it. We may be surprised that happens in mathematics. But um, let's at least have a, some sort of goal. All right. This is going to be just like that crazy hypergeometric proof of the expected value, but this one's going to be way easier. So step one was to uh, rearticulate this as n factorial over x factorial times um, n minus x factorial. So I'm expanding this out. Um, again, ahead of time, I'm thinking to myself, I really think it's going to be n times p. So let me give myself an n times p. Let me pull out an n. Let me pull out a p. Right? That's legal to do because they're just constants. Uh, n factorial is just going to become n minus 1 factorial because I pulled out one of the n's. The bottom is x factorial. Let me pull out one of the p's. So I guess this is p to the x minus 1. And I've got an x minus 1 here lurking. We have played that, that uh, minus 1 game with hypergeometric. Let's see if that works here as well. So I'm going to write this as n minus 1 minus x minus 1 factorial. Again, minus 1 minus a minus 1 doesn't do anything. It just visually looks different. And let me put the same in here. n minus 1 minus x minus 1. And, oh, the other game we played is we divided these guys out. Um, and we could do that if we start at 1, because we can't divide by 0. So this goes away, and this becomes x minus 1 on bottom, factorial. Pulled out one of the x's. And let's clean this up and see what happens. Well, this is np times the sum as x goes from 1 to n. Um, n minus 1 factorial over x minus 1 factorial times n minus 1 minus x minus 1 factorial. Isn't that just n minus 1 choose x minus 1? So you might need to think about that for a second. Write this out, and you'll see you'll get exactly that. p to the x minus 1, 1 minus p to the n minus 1 minus x minus 1. This sure is starting to look like a binomial distribution. And if I were to sum over the sample space, um, and it is a binomial distribution, then I'll get 1. 
except the binomial distribution starts at zero. So let's let y equal x minus one. Um, if y is x minus one, this starts at zero. And instead of going to n, we're going to go to n minus one. This is n minus one, choose y. This is p to the y. This is one minus p to the n minus one minus y. Well, I have a binomial distribution. What are the parameters? What are the parameters here? The parameters are n minus one, so I'm, I have n minus one trials, and p for the probability of success. That's what this guy is. It's a binomial distribution with these parameters. I'm summing from zero to n minus one, so this horrific monstrosity is just one. And almost like magic, but without a bunny rabbit, we get n times p, which is what we intuited. All right, so we get np there. And um, I'm not going to go through uh, the proof of the variance, but you'll get np cubed. Um, I'm happy with these results because if n is equal to 1, it's a single Bernoulli trial, and you'll see that this becomes p, this becomes pq, which is what we derived for the Bernoulli distribution uh, earlier. So this actually tells me that I don't even need to memorize the Bernoulli distribution. I just need to know the general binomial distribution, and the Bernoulli distribution is just the special case uh, with n equals 1. All right, that's everything I want to talk about with the uh, binomial distribution. Um, in summary, this distribution um, is used when you have just two outcomes and you repeat uh, a, a process um, over and over again. Uh, you repeat the trials and those trials are independent. Thanks for listening and I'll see you guys next time.